Okay, hi, and welcome to my session about how we can make our summary informs apps a little bit better. But first, we need to take a look about what summary informs really is to understand how we can make our apps better. Because many people look at summary informs as a magic cross platform box where you can put your code in and you will have a fantastic result on multiple multiple platforms without doing any platform specific code or configurations. Uh, my way to look at summary informs is that it is a framework to build apps for multiple platforms that makes code sharing easier. So it doesn't say that all code need to be shared, but it makes code sharing easier and you can share a lot of the code depending on what app you're building. So you probably already know how summary form works. Uh, it's all built on top of renderers. So for example, the summary forms control for label is just an abstract layer that with properties and methods that tells what the label can do. Then we have a an, uh, layer for each target platform. So on iOS we have a label renderer that that maps the summary forms control into a UA label. And the same on Android. We have a label renderer that renders into a, a text view. So it's always the native control, the platform control that renders on the screen and with that the the user interacts with. All interaction is handled by the renderer and maps it up to the summary informs control that that we are writing our code against, mostly against at least. Um, so uh, the first part of this session will be about how we can do customizations for a platform to make uh, the app a little bit better, a little bit more customized and take advantage of what the platforms can do when the summary informs uh, not is good enough. And the first thing that we can do that we have been able to do since the day one of summary informs is to use custom renderers. And what a custom renderer is, is that you can either override a uh, renderer that is already used. For example, you can override the label re renderer and set other properties than the default one is doing. Or you can write your own render more or less from scratch. Uh, just override the view renderer so you can map your summary forms control to whatever you want. Uh, I will do a short demo of how to use custom renderers. So we'll go in to Visual Studio. So we just close some windows here. So I have created a page for this, custom renderers. Uh, here I have a control. I have created a new button. If you take a look here, it's just an uh, empty control with a text property with view as base class. So it doesn't have anything to do with the summary forms button, but we will create a, a button, a native button control of it. So, in my iOS project, I have um, created a new button renderer. I will only show you the iOS demo here because we don't have time to show it for all platforms, but the concept is the same on all platforms. So, we can go here to the render, we can see that. The base class is view render uh, of new button and UI button. So the new button is a control in some forms that we want to render, and the uh, UI button is the result of the rendering. And we have one method to override that is uh, on element changed. <laughs> that uh, method will run every time the control changed, not when the property changed. When the, for example, when the uh, control is removed from the screen or when it's added. So. Um, when it's added, we can see that in the new e new element is not null. We have also a uh, property here, old element, that is used when it's removed from the screen. Uh, so what we need to do here is that we 
We create the native control, set all the initial properties for it. For example, here uh, I use creating a new UI button. I say size to fit, it would take up the space it have. Uh, I will set background color to red, and I will set a title for it. Uh, if we want the button in this case to listen to changes in the in the control we created, we have to create a bindable object, or uh, bindable properties, because uh, it will only listen to bindable properties, uh, and it and that's the only thing that will work for bindings. Uh, but we, if we want to handle when uh, values change on a bindable property, we can override the on element property changed, and then we can handle the code here. So let's run this. Here's my very beautiful app. I <laughs> I'm not a designer, <laughs> but um, so we can go here, custom renders. We see nothing because we haven't tell the summary forms that we have created our render. So let's go back to the code and do that. Uh, here we have the export renderer attribute that is on assembly level. We need to have this outside of the namespace declaration. So what export renderer does is that it will tell that we will use this render for this type, new button, and the, the type of the render is new button renderer. So every time summary forms starts when you initialize summary forms it will scan all your assemblies for these attributes uh, so let's try to run this again Now we can see the beautiful red button. If we want to change the default behavior on a button, that we will not create our own or own control, we can instead go here and create a new custom renderer. Call it custom button renderer. Add the attribute. Type of button. Now we can use this render to change the behavior of all buttons. If we want it to be on only a few buttons, for example, we can create a new control and uh, add button as a base class for it. But this one will affect all buttons. Override on element changed. Ah, we need to add. Of course. We need to add a button renderer as base class. Then we can access uh, the summary forms control with you using the element property or the native control with the control property. So in this case, we can use the control property and set. title color for example to UI color dot yellow and for normal state. Ah 
that color to select is hard to see. We change to a color that is easier to see on. Maybe make them uh, maybe green instead. So now we can see. It's green, yeah, it's green. It's hard to see. Uh, but we will continue. So the next way we can set uh, platform specific uh, properties. It was not in the summary form from the beginning, but it was introduced, I don't remember the version, but it was a couple of years ago. It's called effects. And uh, the great thing with effects, you don't have to write as most much boilerplate code as with the custom render, and they are more reusable. You can select on what uh, views you will add the uh, effect to. So we can go here and take a look of how uh, an effect will look in the summary forms project. Here we have a shadow effect. Uh, so the only thing I'm doing here is that I'm adding a uh, routing effect as a base class and I will send this key to the to the base class. And you can if you go to the platform effect you can see uh, that the key is created of the re resolution group name and the uh, here in the export effect attribute. So uh, it will be uh, the same principle here as with custom renders. When uh, some reform starters will try to find all these export attributes, so they will know how how to handle them. So this shadow effect we'll have a platform effect as base class and we'll have two methods to override unattached when the effect is added to a control and on detached when it's removed from a control uh, and I think it's really important to use on detached because we can have uh, memory related problems and we can have problems uh, for example in a list view when we reuse cells if we don't restore it to the original state especially if we have a list view that um, all cells doesn't look the same. So this is the platform side of it. The Android platform effects look similar. We only The only difference is that we are instead using the, the uh, Android properties and Android controls. We have text view here, for example. So let's go back to summary forms. and see how to use the shadow effect. So all views in summary forms has a property that is called call effects that we can add one or multiple effects to the control like this. The only thing we need to do is to import the namespace to the to the sample page. So when we run this we will now see that the label will have a have a shadow. This effect is uh, very common you can and can be used on uh, all views. Uh, if we take a look here in the shadow effect, uh, we can make it uh, to be more specific uh, for, uh, for example, for a button. Uh, but uh, in this case, we will do it for all views. So the same map, but we will go to the effects page, and you can see the, bl the blue shadow here. Is the text too small to see, see it? Okay, great. Yeah, right. The third thing we can do to uh, to uh, make and the platform specific things is to use what. It's called platform specifics in uh, several forms. It's a pretty new feature, and uh, they're working hard to make it more possible to uh, use this platform specifics. But it can look like this. For example, on iOS, we have for a set use safe area if we want to handle, uh, for example, iPhone uh, 10, and we can set the how a model will look. For example, this here set form sheet. It will not be. 
a full page when we navigate into a model um, and we can set the status bar hidden but there are a lot of more and there are more coming in the upcoming versions and we have uh, also for Android it will look like this you on the only thing that you set this uh, this uh, uh, on or on the platform so there are not the same platform specifics for all platforms so you can you cannot use set toolbar placement on iOS for example so that is specific for Android and one other things that we can use uh, in our SAML to make things different on different platforms is just to use the on platform element so for example we can have different font size on iOS and Android just to use this in our SAML and the last thing we can do uh, is to use native views if we're using a shared project as code our code sharing strategy we can add those uh, platform specific views directly in our sample just to declare the namespace uh, I've done that a couple of times for example I used to use it if I want to use uh, the UI segmented control I can still run uh, write code for it in the back end uh, code behind and things like that so I think it's a nice way to inject uh, platform specific controls in SAML without having to create a custom control and without having to create a custom renderer we can also take a complete different approach when we're using SAML forms instead of using SAML forms first we can use something that is called forms native we're creating uh, iOS the Android app and we're building the UI specific for those uh, platforms with storyboarding with uh, XML um, for those views where we need it and for views that are shared for example often a settings page or about page will always look the same on both platforms we can use some reforms for that uh, with forms native is was earlier called uh, uh, summary forms uh, embedded but they have changed the name to forms native now so you can only use the extension method for example for on iOS create view controller and you will get a view controller from your summary forms page that you can use in the regular uh, iOS uh, navigation system and on Android you can use create fragment and you will get fragment and if you are creating a UVP app you can use the create fram framework element okay that was the platform uh, part of this session now I will go into how uh, you can uh, work in some forms to make uh, make your app a li little more interactive and um, yeah by using a few tricks the first thing that I want to talk about is triggers that can be used for example for trigger uh, different things it can change properties uh, depends on states it can triggers on events and things like that so I will show you a little bit about how the code could look for that this is a property trigger uh, so it will trigger when a property changed so you can define for example in this case we have an entry and uh, when the entry is focused we will set a couple of properties so in this case when it's focused is true we will change the background color to yellow to make it more obvious to the user that they have selected the entry uh, we can also do data tri triggers and data triggers is about to trigger something when a uh, um, specific condition is uh, fulfilled so if for example if the length of the entry in the top here is uh, zero we will will not enable the button we will set use the setter and the element property to set it to false and then we have multi triggers it's basically the same as a um, data trigger but we will be able to have multiple conditions and the last trigger is the event trigger that can be used if you want to write code um, 
for what will happen when an uh, event occurs. So instead of using events in your code behind, you can use more uh, this code because it will be reusable over more views. So I will show you a little demo about how triggers can work. So let's go into Visual Studio. Close all the windows from the previous win demo. S so we can go to this trigger space I created here. And I have just uh, created a simple property trigger. So when th the user is focused uh, on the entry, it will set background color to yellow and uh, it will set font attributes to bold. Uh, when the user is unselected, the entry it will automatically go back to the previous values on the property, so we don't have to handle that as well. The trigger will do that for us. So let's run this. This is a very simple demo, but you can use it to build more advanced things as well. Uh, but I don't tend to use triggers very often. I use behaviors more. So behaviors is very similar to triggers. The only difference is that you write everything in code what will happen. So in this demo, I have created a, an entry again an entry that requires the data to be in a specific format. So we have the phone number that will we will have a dash in the middle, for example. Uh, so we can create behavior to help the user with that, and we can also use the behavior to validate the data. Of course, we need to validate it before we, for example, send it to the server and also validate it on the server, but uh, we can see that the validation in the behavior more a thing for building a great user experience. So what we can do is to create a behavior and the uh, behaviors are shared between all platforms. So we can take a look of the behavior I behavior I have created. Uh, this is a behavior that has a behavior of entry as base class. If you want to use them for for example of all views, uh, we can instead uh, right view here, or entry, but this is very specific to entry. Uh, and here we also have uh, on attach to, and we will get the entry that is attaching attached to, and we will have it on the attaching from, and we will get the entry that is detaching from. So, <coughs> what I will do in the on attached to method is uh, that I want to listen to the text changed uh, event, and I will will uh, remove it on the detached from. As you, you can see, you can have used the event trigger for this case as well. It's, as I said, very similar to each other. Uh, so, here I can write some code, okay, if text length is three, uh, three and it's uh, bigger than before, okay, I insert the dash for the user. And I can also do some validation, okay, if it's if the new length is bigger than 10, okay, don't let the user to write anymore. Uh, and we when uh, the validation uh, is okay, we can set the background color to green. We need to go to the to the page and add the behavior as well. We have already important uh, imported the behavior namespace, so, so we can use it directly with the entry dot behaviors property. So I have the phone name number 
behavior. Now we can run it and we will see. While I tend to use behaviors more often than triggers because uh, you can do much more in a behavior. In a trigger, it has to be uh, event that triggers uh, what will happen. Uh, in a behavior, you can decide that whatever you want to run the code uh, you want. So, okay, we'll go to behaviors. One other thing that I think makes uh, apps more uh, makes apps better is animations and the uh, Samurai forms have a very very good animation layer without uh, any big performance problems it's uh, just a very very thin layer on top of the platforms so uh, you can <laughs> try to use the Samurai forms animations before uh, you will use the platform uh, animations but uh, I don't think if you will get a performance problem with the uh, summary forms animation will be probably get the same performance problem if you fall back to the platform as well because it's just a thin layer as I said so we will go back to this animation page that I have created and take a look at the code behind because animations needs to be created in the code behind you cannot do it in uh, the sample page right now uh, I read that they will introduce uh, storyboards uh, to some forms. If you are a Windows developer, UVP de developer, you probably know how to use uh, storyboards for animations. Uh, so uh, in this demo, I have created a, a couple of box views um, that will be be uh, bars, like bars that are animated up and down in height. Uh, so that's one thing we can do with animation is that we can uh, we can animate every property so we can say over this time change this property so but we can o also do for example like uh, like this we go here we can do translations if we want to move uh, an object on the screen we can scale it scale it and uh, we can rotate it, I will show you that later uh, but first we will run, run this and see how the animation will look so I added a start button that is green now because of the custom renderer and we can see this is uh, the speed here is set to be random, so it will. So this is only summary forms code, and we can go back here and we can use uh, use the rotate method or relative rotate too. It will always rot rotate in in uh, this case 360 degrees from the current position. We can have a also use rotate too. It then it will rotate to for example 360 degrees but if you run it again it will stay on that position because it have already rotated to 360 degrees so in this case it will be uh, continue to rotate all the time and it will be done uh, for 500 milliseconds for each animation Maybe the not the most useful animation, <laughs> but uh, it will show you what you can do with summary forms. But maybe the most important thing if you want to build a great app is performance. So I will give you 
a few performance tricks that you can use in your Xamarin Forms apps. The first is to use compiled SAML. It's by def it's default now in the uh, templates that comes with Visual Studio. It's just an attribute that you can add on page level or on application level. But it will compile all your SAML instead of uh, of uh, parsing it in runtime that it was before. So use compile SAML. If you have a page that doesn't work with compile SAML, remove it just for that page. Have it on by default. And you can also compile the bindings. The bindings are not compiled when you're compiling your SAML. So if you are a UWP developer, you've probably used uh, XBind to use compile bindings. But with some reforms, it will look a little bit different. You will add a data type to the element that you want to bind to. For example, x dot data type and set the type you want to have. It. Um, the recommendation is to set it on uh, on the same level as you set the binding context. For example, you will add the type uh, property to the to a content page. And if you have a data template, for example, if you have a list view, you will also add the type to the data template with the same property x uh, colon data type. Another thing that you can use is layout compression. And layout compression uh, will, uh, <laughs> what it will do is it will remove some attributes because you sometimes you just add uh, elements to your semi forms page, like a stack layout or a grid, uh, to place uh, elements on the page. But it doesn't really um, show anything. Be you have no visual properties like padding and uh, background color or things like that. You can try to set uh, layout compression on them to um, make it maybe not need to render it. But you have to do this on every element because. Um, and try it because uh, sometimes you can uh, have problems with layered compressions uh, and you should not use it on a site that is resized if it's rendered the first time it will be the uh, look the same all the time without no resizing it'll probably uh, work to set layered compressions and um, you will probably not see any difference in performance on your development devices because developers li like high-end devices but uh, in many cases the user doesn't have the same high-end Android they have uh, have a cheap uh, uh, Android device that they bought at the supermarket on Black Friday uh, so many users will probably see a difference but uh, if we ru only run it on uh, high-end devices like iPhone 10 or uh, Pixel 3, we will not see any difference. Um, and on Android, we can also use what Xamarin is called fast renderers. Uh, it's only in preview right now, and uh, what you will do is you set a flag in the main activity to say, run fast renderers. And uh, it will run render in another way. Uh, the most of the original control renderers on Android are composed of two views. A native control, such as a button or a text view, but it's also a container around it, a view group. Uh, what fast renderers does is just try to use only one native control, to it and uh, that will result in a smaller, smaller tree and it will be faster to render. Uh, but that is only in preview right now, so it's may not be stable but I'm using it in uh, my apps right now and I haven't seen any problems with it so try it in your apps it will incre increase the performance uh, if you have used some reforms from uh, from the beginning or very long you know that list views was one of the biggest performance problems when some reforms was introduced but by introducing recycle elements and the reuse of cells, the performance in a list view will be much, much better. 
Uh, you should not use recycled elements on all list views, but if you have similar data in all your cells, you should use it because it will be so much faster if you have a long list because it will reuse cells that not are uh, visible anymore instead of y just creating new and take up more memory. And should you should don't use observable collection and the add method if you want to add a uh, complete a long list of items. You can use it if you want to add uh, one or two items to a current list, but don't use it uh, in the beginning when you initialize the list and the data, because every time you call the add method, it will trigger a rendering of the list. Uh, and avoid changing the cell layout based on the binding context. For example, if you have a template selector that uh, would will uh, for each row that it renders it will check what template should I use should I use this template should I use this template okay it's great in many ways but it will also affect performance so tr if you can avoid it um, and if you have a very complex design of your list you consider to use a custom render instead make the the list view without renderings. And that was often the case in the beginning of the summary forms area. Uh, we created uh, custom renders for all list views in the apps, in all apps. But uh, um, in an app I have worked with since 2014, we have um, more or less write the app from the beginning again, and we have seen no need for custom renders from list view. So it, it has been so much better in some everything forms and the performance overall has also been so much better. But uh, if you have a really complex layout um, you maybe need to write a custom render for it. I also want to give you some other tips and tricks how to make the apps faster and better. Avoid nesting elements uh, because every nesting you do in your SAML will be heavier to render. Uh, and you, as I said before, with the layout compression, you will probably not see it in a, on a high-end device. But every render takes more uh, rendering takes more memory and takes time. So, could you avoid heavy rendering things? You will have a better app. And the same. Don't set default values on properties uh, because uh, it will also trigger a new rendering even if the value is already set. So. And don't use grid instead of stack layouts, for example. And don't use absolute layouts instead. Don't uh, use grids instead of stack layouts and use absolute layout instead of rea relative layouts where it's pop possible because. If you're using a stack layout or relative layout, the render needs to do a lot of calculations. It needs to calculate the width and height, and will it will be much more heavy to render than if you have the sizes set already. It will be the same if you use the grid and set uh, grid height or grid uh, uh, like column height or col uh, column width or row height to auto. It, it also needs to do those calculations. So try to avoid that. That was everything I wanted to talk about today about summary forms. Uh, do you have any questions? You can uh, ask them now. We have a couple of minutes left here, and uh, I will be in the ask the, ask the expert zone after this. So you can come there if you want to talk about summary forms as well. Uh, she will come with the microphone. How about another platforms like uh, WPF and uh, macOS? I, I saw the uh, preview version of Xamarin Forms that they're, they're planning it. I, yes, that you can use uh, Xamarin Forms for macOS and uh, WPF 
I don't know if the VP app version is stable yet. I think it's just a preview. But the, uh, the Mac OS version has been uh, with us for a couple of years. I think it's stable. I have just tried it a little bit and it work works pretty great. But uh, if you're building a desktop app with some forms and the mobile apps, you probably need to do some uh, customizations uh, for it to look good on a desktop. But it's the same if you want to target pla uh, tablets as well. Uh, so. Thank you. You can always contact me if you have questions on Twitter or on LinkedIn, or you can read on my blog. And I also will have a session later today about uh, mobile DevOps, uh, not just for Xamarin, no, it's more general mobile DevOps session. So thank you for coming. <laughs>